In part 3 we're going to look at what options we have for graphically displaying our data. If we return to our uh, example data set and again we go to output but this time uh, select output standard and unknown XY plots this gives us access to a very versatile uh, window. At the moment it's set on standards if we select our unknowns we have our same uh, samples uh, and we can uh, select each of these in turn. We've got it set to output to a graph window, but you can export to uh, directly export to an ASCII file or uh, to a printer if you've got one set up. Now you'll see there's three columns of windows here. For certain data, you can plot uh, three values, uh, but in this data, we've got uh, X and Y data. Uh, now, if uh, for example, sample 3A was a line profile. Uh, we could select line numbers and then uh, block select uh, the elemental percents of all of the elements and check output. Calculates all the data and then gives us a graphical output of the data. Another way we can do it is if, for example, we wanted to see if there was uh, any variation, any uh, coherent variation, say, between uh, calcium magnesium, uh, we can do it by, if we look at, let's look at the atomic percents, magnesium, sorry, uh, let's, yeah, select magnesium and then atomic percent calcium and select output now this looks a bit of a mess because we've got a uh, line selected so if we uh, select to close that and change that to a scatter plot and re-output it And we can see there's some indication of a correlation there, but not particularly strong. But in your samples, that might be different. So how about if we wanted to see, because that's just the data points for that sample, how about if we wanted to see uh, for all of the samples, if they're from uh, either the same rock and you've got different areas. So we can block select the samples. And again, if we go to atomic percent uh, magnesium and calcium, and output and again we've got scatter selected rather than line you'll calculate the values from all of the data points And now we can see that we've got uh, two distinct uh, groupings of samples, or three if you separate these out into two. Now what we don't know from this is which sample is assigned to which of these groups. So it's more useful if we select the average only. And if we include uh, data labels, and then again output And it'll recalculate. It recalculates from scratch each time uh, in case we've changed any of the calculation parameters.
and now we can see that it's actually samples uh, 7 and 8, which if we compare the list here is sample 3 and 3A, has a much higher uh, magnesium and calcium ratio uh, than the other samples. Now if we look at a different database, so we close this one, And again, go to Output, Sad and Unloans. Now here we can see that I've acquired uh, data at a, uh, a number of different accelerating voltages. Uh, we've only got one sample selected, but I want to select the fifth, the, uh, all the voltages for sample uh, bismuth 20. I could manually select them, but an easier way to do that is just in the sample string here, is to put in uh, bismuth 20, and that automatically selects. Now what I want to do is I want to look at what the variation is uh, for the kilovolts and I want to look at the K ratios. So I select one of the coppers. Uh, so I've got all of the points, uh, put it as a scatter. And here we can see uh, the data with the number of data points at each uh, voltage uh, for, the, for the different elements. Now again it might be useful if we just look at the uh, average for those. Now the symbols are quite small here so they not, might not be terribly easy to see but we can see there's quite a nice curve uh, for the bismuth and also for the copper and the oxygen. Now we've got some other options for uh, how we display the data uh, which are hidden in a separate window. Now we can either right click and select the customization dialog or simply uh, double left click on the window area uh, and this brings up a, a customization box where we can change uh, the title, we can add a subtitle but we can also go to plot and here we can see that we've got points uh, and we can select points with the best fit line which will put a straight line through the data which obviously for our data is not particularly meaningful. We can put a best fit curve which is a uh, polynomial curve which doesn't fit uh, particularly well to our data, certainly not to the, uh, to the bismuth. But another more useful one is we can select a spline which applies a smooth curve that goes through each of our data points and we can see that we've got some uh, quite nice correlations there between the uh, the two data sets. Uh, this sample is a, um, a copper on a bismuth oxide on a bismuth substrate so we can see as the accelerating voltage increases our bismuth is increasing but our copper and our oxygen are decreasing. Uh, if we check axis we can also change the uh, one or both of the axes to log uh, which uh, sometimes is useful for being able to compare uh, high concentrations and low concentrations uh, on the same plot. Now here obviously the uh, bismuth and the copper and the oxygen are uh, quite different so we could for example uh, only select the copper Again, change that to a spline like that. Uh, we could also plot it as uh, bar charts, or as area curves. So this might not be particularly useful for this sample. Uh, but I think the spline is, works quite well here. Now you can either copy this uh, to the clipboard for embedding in uh, a presentation or Word document or uh, print to your uh, default printer. So take some time to uh, explore what all the options are uh, for what you can plot uh, against each other uh, and uh, enjoy outputting your data.